Tim Wheatley, a pleasure to have you back with uh, Wheatley Records. Pleasure to see you today as well, Mr. Kashmir. It's been a long time since we've done this, but uh, we have done this dance a lot. <laughs> yes. So it's Wheatley Records, not Wheatley Junior Records. No, it is. It's it's Wheatley Records. That's right. Um, dusted off the logo and uh, brought the got the trademark back out and had to had to find a lot of things and chase a lot of people down and change over the directorship, which was pretty difficult without the original director around. Um, it's yeah. been it's been quite a ride. Um, and uh, so far, so good, mate. <laughs> Yeah, so the original logo with the kookaburras, I, I recall. Yep, yep, that's right. I mean, there, there was a couple of incarnations on it. Um, uh, and uh, I believe Ian McClausen did the first one, who was a, a classic, classic old uh, graphic artist for all the bands back in the day. And, uh, yeah, but uh, it's, it's changed a few times. I decided to stick with the 80s one. I thought it looked a little bolder. Yeah, I think Ian was the guy who did the uh, the Rolling Stones coming to Australia in 1972 tour poster, yep. which is yeah, just yeah, one yeah. Of those iconic tour posters now. So it, it is, it is. I, I, the Stones still use them as well. I think. I mean, it's, um, yeah, no, he was he was he was brilliant, and uh, he was uh, Dad's go to man for a lot of the projects back in the day. Well, I'm really excited that you're working with Dan Keys and the New Rides. Uh, more excited though that uh, a weekly and a Keys. Are working together <laughs> you know I, I genuinely hadn't hadn't thought of that um but yeah that is that is quite a full circle moment there as well but um uh Dan Keys and the New Rides is something it's that, that really resonated with me and especially with the, the spirit of Wheatley Records as well um you know it was a it was always a lost boys home dad 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 brought Wheatley Records up because he couldn't get record deals outside of Mushroom back in the day Mm-hmm. And um, and and just said, well, you know, I have to do this myself. And um, and uh, I think the spirit of it, as I said, like the Lost Boys Home, and and um, uh, you know, it's it, it was it was a passion project for him. Every single time he released someone through it, um, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do at the moment as well with Dan Keys and the New Rides. It, it's um, I met him in uh, Los Angeles when I was living over there years ago, and he was a nightclub promoter and used to help me get into various spots and um, he started writing with a very dear friend of mine, Tim Metcalf, who writes with um, Robbie Williams and in a dance act called Lufthouse. And um, I just, I just looked at the team around it, including James Miller, who's mixing and things like that. And I just go, this is a team I want to be a part of. And, uh, and they came to me with in, in such great spirit as well, just knowing I'd been talking to Tim about dusting off the label and he's just like, this is a great story. This is the story we want behind this act as well. And it's a, it, it's an act that's in it. While Stan's done a lot in the past in, in various bands, it's an act that's still very much in its infancy, and we're going to be growing and learning together. And um, and we all know what we're in for. We know it's going to be a, a hard slog, but um, I think that they can rest assured knowing that. Um, well, they're probably not in safe hands, but they're in the hands of someone who who really who does care. And um, it sounds as cheesy as that sounds. Um, that was one thing I always noticed with um when I when I was on spent eight years on Sony and I'm not speaking ill of Sony I'm just saying it was the wrong fit for me, um I was a small fish in a big pond there, and um and here um you know it's it's going to be run a little differently around here it's going to be a little bit more cavalier, and very hands on. With uh, Dan Keys and the New Rides, uh, it's it's organic. I mean it's real music. And, you know, it's fantastic that this is your first signing, considering that uh, when Glenn started Wheatley Records uh, way back in the late 70s, uh, I think Mark Gillespie would have been uh, one of his first signings, if not the first, and uh, another organic act. So you're coming from exactly the same soul. Yeah, look, Mark Gillespie is one of those songs as well that growing up, Dad always used to just palm off Mark Gillespie songs. He's just saying he still he still genuinely believed that to the day he died that Mark Gillespie was the best singer songwriter that he'd ever heard. Um, had the best songs and the best lyrics, and you know I, I don't. It never reached the heights that it never you know that did that. But it, like you said, it's organic, it's real music, and I think it's um uh, the epitome of you know it's I think it's the, a great f- first foot first step and. Um, you know, I'm I'm a country music fan, as you know. I'm 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 a country music artist at heart, and um and I think what he's done with these tunes with Tim and James is um 
is 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 craft country music in in a sort of a a forward thinking fashion as well with a few other elements um it's, you know sometimes this song started off as a pop song london and um they took it country and i think it's i think what they've done is beautiful i think that's got a lot of color to it a lot of tapestry and a lot of depth and like you said it's just it's just a great real song well tim wheatley signed tim wheatley or is tim wheatley too difficult to work with Tim Wheatley is impossible to work with, but let it be known, I technically was the first signing. Um, it's, it's a very lax deal, though. <laughs> yeah. So there is more new music coming from you. You haven't uh, sort of gone completely corporate on us. No, 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 no. Don't let the shirt fool you. It's just all I had. Um, it's I, um, I genuinely am getting back into it. I had an album ready to go for through COVID, et cetera, and, you know, uh, God had a different plan for all of us. And um, it's something that I've promised myself and it's something that my family are desperate for me to get back into at the moment because um, I've only done a handful of shows since Dad had passed because, well, you know, when he passed, he left a lot of loose ends and a lot of projects open and, I, you know, I put my hand up to finish those things and complete those things and we're ticking them off one by one. And But um, if he was around, I can guarantee you that he would be very disappointed that I haven't been focusing on the music because it was something that he was very proud of and passionate about and... He's my biggest supporter in that sense. So once I sort of got over the hump of, um, uh, you know, losing a lot of confidence in that without him there, um, I, I picked up the guitar again, as you can probably see here in the background, okay. and um, and it's become uh, it's become a solace for me, and it's become very soothing for me. And my family's sick and tired of me performing for them, <laughs> so um, I think I need another outlet. <laughs> Well, a kid's album wouldn't have gone astray at this point in your life. Well, how do you know that hasn't begun, Mr. Cashmere? <laughs> <Seriously? laughs> no, to a degree. Um, it's, been, it's been something that we've been tinkering around with just uh, just for my daughter, London's sake. Um, uh, but no, she likes the hits. Uh, she's, not, she's not fooled by the, the kiddie music. <laughs> Tim Wheatley, the fifth wiggle. Yeah, that's right. Okay, is there a is there a black wiggle? I like that one. I like the color of that. I think the little I can be the dark wiggle because it was twenty seventeen. Uh, pull it a post. You know, that's coming up to seven years ago now. I know it's um that's quite a humbling figure. Yeah, I didn't even realize. And um, cast of yesterday was two years before that as well. I was, I was independent when we did cast of yesterday, and the the um the minor milestones that we had uh, led me to led me to into Sony's arms. And then um, I did a couple of VPs over COVID. Well, actually, it was an entire album, but we, due to the lack of touring, et cetera, and, um, you know, the modern algorithms with DSPs and Spotify, et cetera, we thought we'd divide the record up and and uh, spread ourselves over more territory there. And, um, uh, you know, it was, you know, sadly, those two records, you know, sort of fell by the wayside due to, due to the global circumstances, but um, definitely something I'm going to revisit and, and get back, sink my teeth back into. What about the back catalogue of Wheatley Records from the 80s? Uh, all of those releases from back then, uh, do they come back to you or are they sort of... That is in the hands of many people right now as we sift through faxes and uh, nothing was digitised. Um, it's, it's a completely separate battle as to trying to figure out what Wheatley licensed and for how long and what masters Wheatley owns. And where those masters are, it's um, it's they're scattered across the, the four corners of the of the earth, and uh, the only man with the answers has decided to check out. So <laughs> he's like, he's like, I always say to everyone, um, he didn't leave us with much, but he left us with a lot of bloody treasure maps, and we are <laughs> mum and I just pulling out these treasure maps and trying to decipher where these things are, and X marks the spot, but it's never very clear. Um, so it's involving a, a lot of catch-ups with a lot of former artists and things like that as well to try and figure out how it's all going and where it was all left. Um, it's definitely something I'd like to um, have a look at for nostalgic purposes more than anything else um, and try to compile a few things together that sort of celebrates Wheatley Records. And, um, yeah, so it's up. But like I said, there's nothing difficult. We, we've just got boxes of, of old contracts and, um, and manila folders. Yeah. Well, you know, just rattling off some of the artists, uh, Moving Pictures, of course, and What mm -hmm. About Me was Wheatley Records, uh, Broderick Smith's uh -huh. Big Combo, uh, Real Life, Send Me an Angel, uh, yep. you yep. know, Michael yep. Espy, who we've talked about. But, you know, of course, the uh, the big one was Whispering Jack. Yep, yep. And um, 
And funnily enough, you know, like that, that sort of catapulted Wheatley Record and Dad's success in, into a, into a, another hemisphere in, in which sort of Wheatley Records then ironically sort of fell by the wayside as he sort of focused on John's career and, and, and management side of things. Um, always kept Wheatley Records in the wings for those projects that he couldn't sort of get over the line and wanted to handle himself. But um, no, it was, uh, you know, we, we've, had a, we've had a big year in that resurgence um, with John's catalogue. And, and the success of everything and through uh, Finding the Voice the documentary, obviously, which which beautifully touched on Wheatley Records. And um, I, the, the documentary was started off more as, um, you know, a, a John Farnham highlight reel. And then um, I guess when my father passed, we spent a lot of time with Poppy Stockel, the director, and Paul Clark, and, and the narrative shifted and it got a lot more sentimental. We found a story within a story. And I think that's what um, has the documentary it's not just sex drugs and rock and roll um and you know up and up and up it's um it's the heartfelt story within within a success story and so many people watched it I mean, it was absolutely remarkable it became the biggest uh most viewed documentary in australian history the most the highest grossing australian documentary in history and it's um it's it, it, I, I still remember being in, in, in an Uber going to the premiere with my mother and the two of us didn't say a word for a long time. Um, Chain Reaction came on the radio and it was somewhat of an omen. But, you know, we, 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 the success of it was absolutely astounding. We had no, we, we didn't know whether or not that story would resonate with everyone um, the way it did. Um, we, we'd watched so many different cuts of, of the documentary. So you sort of lose a little bit of touch, um, you know, with it, you know, you're not watching it for the first time and getting that impact. You've sort of helped build it, um, you know, from its infancy. And it was um, the, the reception at um, at the theatre that night was um, something I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. Um, and then it, then the ride that ensued, I mean, mum and I were, uh, mum and I did an interview for that documentary a few weeks after dad passed. And um, and she's been standing tall, and we've we've had to sort of um, toe the line for these projects and put on a very brave face when a lot of the time it was um, incredibly hard. And and funnily enough, it was you know the Australian music industry and the music industry gets a bad rap a lot of the time. But um, there's no way in hell we could have done it without these people and friends of ours and friends of my father that helped prop us up throughout the entire year. Um, we needed we needed help because a lot of the time we just wanted to just disappear and and uh, get to grieving, but we, uh, we didn't really get that chance. And uh, Dad kept us very, very busy in typical Glen Wheatley fashion. Well, sometimes celebration is the best way to grieve. Uh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. It was, um, and it was a celebration, that documentary of him. And, um, and I, I'm just so proud that we got that story out as well. And my daughter will be able to watch it one day when she's old enough and, and see what he did. And that, that probably means more to me than anything else. I'm hearing good things about John. I know it's been a long recovery, but uh, slow and steady seems to be winning the race. Um, it does. It does. His um, his family keep us updated, and uh, everything's positive at this point. And um, yeah, let's let's hope one day we can get him back out there. <laughs> well, never say never. No, think... no, no. We said it once before. We've been paying for it ever since. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Actually, I, I've had this conversation many, many times with Glenn. He <laughs> never, ever said it was going yeah. to be the last time. The last time I, tour, I know, was I was there. The last I was time there. Album. You don't need to tell me that. You don't need to tell me that. I was there. I was at the press conference. I watched them say, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it, uh, but i tell you what, I've always loved that narrative and I love the jokes uh, and I've said goodbye to my friends a few times thinking that I was going back to London and then something else has come up. Then I was going back to London and then coming back and there's just, you know, once again, it's more farewells than Johnny Farnham. And I do, I do love that. Oh. And let's hope there's plenty more to come. I mean, that's, 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 that's my hope is I want that joke to continue on because uh, it'll, you know, it will be sad when he stops um, performing. That'd be certain. I think it has become part of the Australian vernacular, hasn't it? You're, yes, it you're has doing been. a Farnham when you do something after you said you're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly right. And I think that's great. It's, it's a legacy. There's a lot of pressure behind it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations on getting Wheatley Records back up and running. Um, Dan Keys and the New Rides, uh, the song London, hopefully an album in the new year, and hopefully a lot of artists after that. Yep, let, let, let's hope, let's hope. And um, 
and uh, we can have this chat a lot more times and uh, and so I can continue introducing friends of mine that I want to support. And, um, and yeah, thanks for your time, mate. I really appreciate it.